Hey, thanks for stopping by the channel. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're checking out the, the bell icon down there somewhere. I don't know where it shows up on the screen when you're watching. So uh, I'm really excited to have Lillian Sparrow with me. Okay, that's not their names. They're, it's Pat, Pat or Patrick and Lauren. <laughs> and they are um, entrepreneurs and they live in Louisiana. And they're going to tell you exactly where they live here in just a second. I happen to uh, got this hookup, this connection through a very dear friend and brother of mine named Kevin Yacht, who I'm trying to get to name his business so I can interview him and his business partner so we can get his business on the website as well. But uh, these two have a very interesting story and I've already had a conversation with Lauren on the phone and so we know who the brains behind the business is right now. So <laughs> <laughs> Pat and Lauren, tell me a little bit about yourselves, how old you are, exactly where you live in Louisiana and uh, how we got to Lillian Sparrow and what it means. Let me start. Sure. Um, so we live in just a little small town right outside of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, and we have four kids, ages almost two to almost 12. And I'm a third grade teacher at a Catholic school here in um, the local area. And I am a um, jack of all trades, I guess. I, I graduated in physical therapy and have been a practicing physical therapist for uh, 11 years now. And uh, that is becoming less and less my job. And I also own an event production company called Fresh Junkie Racing with, four, with three other business partners. Um, and what, we what, was, what was the name of that? Fresh Junkie? <laughs> Fresh Junkie Racing, um, and we put on 15 events across the South, um, across the year, Great. from marathons yeah. to 5Ks, a couple of triathlons along the way as well when the weather gets warmer and the distance running kind of goes by the wayside. Um, and then in the last year, we have started this uh, woodworking company. Accidentally. Um, Lillian yeah. Sparrow, and so yeah. it became. Um, that started about a year ago at this time. Yeah, we. Oh, um, Lauren, he yeah. made you. A, he made you a cutting board. Yeah, so he was out of work due to um, circumstances, and um, I was home teaching, you know, third graders virtually, and then <clears throat> home with the four kids, and so we just had um, a lot of time, but not so much. You know, it was crazy, but we had some time on our hands, and we had remodeled our kitchen years ago when we first moved in um, and we had a piece of butcher block left over. I think I had moved that piece of butcher block 15 times yeah. wondering whether <laughs> I was gonna throw it away or actually do something with it before I actually ended up doing something with it. So um, I had liked these uh, charcuterie boards that a friend had and I said, oh, I, I would love if you made me one like that because he was kind of just, you know, piddling and you know, helping with the kids, not helping with the kids, because it's, you know, he's, he's a parent too, of course, but um, we had time on our hands, and so he made me one, and we posted it on Facebook, and then one person ordered it, and then we posted that one, and then, you know, two more people ordered, and it was sort of, um, it's, it's kind sort of this of, organic thing that just yeah, blew up on its own. A little exponential, where, like, um, where is this famous cutting board? Yeah, right over there. he doesn't like me to show it because it's his first and he hates it, but it's my favorite. It's true, it's, I dislike it. It's where it started, but it sits <laughs> over my um, so, so you like it, you like it enough that you showed it and it sold, and he doesn't want anybody to see it. That's right, she's she's gonna get it and show it to you, but um, yeah, it's you know, I never found myself thought of myself as someone who would be unemployed, but there I was last March, um, unemployed. You don't like that. No, I if just, he doesn't, he thinks it's one of his... There's, some, there's some details about it that I don't like, I, but, you know, that's the... But to me, it's that's not the, about the That's looks. the fun in it. You know, yeah. it's, 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 I'm always trying to be better than the previous one. Um, well, yeah, that's, I mean, you're always trying to improve. Life. Right. So it makes perfect sense. Like, and I, I'm not a woodworker, but I do a lot of my own work because, well, who can afford to hire somebody, right? So That's true. So, and so and that, was, that was part of what I found myself doing, you know, so... So then I'm laid off and I'm wondering what to do. Well, let's just great place to be with four kids. Before we go back, let's before we get into just the business, you you were working full time as a physical therapist. 
So I was working part time as a PT part -time? And, okay. and then part time. So two days a week, I was in the clinic um, doing outpatient orthopedics. And three days of the week, I was working for my event production company. And we were growing quickly and we were forecasting that within the next six months, eight months, that I wouldn't have to be working in the clinic anymore, that I could go full time into the event company and, you know, keep my salary whole and, and, you know, still be able to, to do the things that I love to do. It's not that I don't like physical therapy. It's that, that I have, I'm more passionate about the, the ownership side of my own business. Okay. Um, so you, but you have, I mean, like you, physical therapy is not a cheap school. No. Oh no. And no, you did that full time. We're, for we're still, we're still paying for that. One, <laughs> that's for sure. Right. So, so it's, so you took a hit when the coof came in. Yes. Yeah. So a big hit and, and, and it was immediate. And, and, and it, it didn't just, wow. and it didn't just affect your job as a physical therapist. It affected your job or, or your, your career, your business, your personal business with your other partners. Because yeah. I know for a fact from talking to Kevin, everything shut yeah, down. Yeah. Kevin was actually signed up to, to work an event with us a couple of weeks. Um, I think it was 10 days after the shutdown happened. And um, we, we were supposed to put on this event um, and at the same time, so I'm, I'm be now being told by the city that we can't do the event because they're saying that no events are allowed and then go to work the next day at the clinic and they're saying, yeah, we don't really need you right now. Um, we'll call you when we need you. Um, with, with, and to no fault of their own, there was no end date in sight for that. That right. portion of things. So, so <clears throat> you took a double hit. Yes. At a time when things were looking really good. Yeah, things were things were looking great. It, it was it was this bizarre nightmare that that everything that was looking as well as it was looking went to zero in a couple weeks. Yeah. So so Lauren, I'm gonna. Watching... Sorry, Pat. I didn't mean to interrupt. That's okay. No, yeah, I... Then we're watching our our event company. All this. This, these financials that we've put away, now we're just slowly burning through them to keep our, because we kept our employees paid. Um, whether they were, whether there was work or not. Correct, because they were valued employees. Right. There was no work to do, but we valued our employees and we valued you are, them. You are the epitome of an evil capitalist. You, yeah, man. we're, we're terrible. Oh, you horrible, horrible person, you. <laughs> um, so Lauren, I'm going to, I'm going to, push on you a little bit here okay? okay and and i mean this uh i obviously we've just met you know we, you and i talked on the phone the other day and yeah. i kind of i got a little bit of a feel for you i can hear a heart in you not not that i can't hear one in you pat so i can't, I can, but i mean i'm actually more cool, a little more cold-hearted than him but <laughs> i'm so glad i pretended well no i'm just kidding so i i imagine you're a mom and and you're working at a school kids are home now you're the only one with any income. Yeah, that's right. You're 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 panicking. Um. Yeah. So to, we some, did, to some degree, because I know how yeah. I know how wives are. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and you know, we our kids go to this private Catholic school, which is, you know, something that we value and put away for every month. And so then when that, you know. As a teacher, I don't I don't do it for the money. <laughs> so, yeah, when it was just my salary, and then we we're just living off of you know some savings, and some of which included you know tuition for the next year, and it was a scary place to be. We know that we, um, I mean, both of us have incredible family, so we knew we weren't going to be uh, on the streets. But that's not a good place to be when you have uh, you know four kids and you've you know, you've, you've done all the right things, you know, the right things you think and um, worked really hard. So it's a scary place to be. Yeah. And we just had her, we only, the baby was only like eight months old. And I mean, when I say to the baby, like we had looked at finances and said like, can we afford this other baby? And yes, we can. Yes. Go, go, go. And we had a baby and then, and then we had no jobs. So. And yeah. so no, so Pat, for you, like, if you're like, me like it there's a little bit of pride and a little bit of self self worth wrapped up in providing for your family and Absolutely. Now, and so no pow, no fault of your own 
no failure in your job performance, no, no like nefarious dealings in your personal business as well mm. comes along. And now you're being told by powers outside of yourself, basically you're unessential, sir. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not necessary. Um, and that was a weird place to be because, you know, like I said a few minutes ago, I never viewed myself as someone who would be unemployed. I, I don't know. It's just, and, and it's weird to say that, but like, because I guess we're all, we're all vulnerable to it apparently. Um, so I was in this weird position where, you know, I went from being the provider to, to being incapable of being the provider, no matter what my opinions or my outlook was. And so then, you know, Honestly, there was, there was my, I called my brother and he needed some sod laid. And I went and took one of our event trailers, filled it up with pallets of sod and went and laid sod. Like I was doing anything I could for anybody that I could. And it was mostly relatives, but even in that it's hard to find, it was hard to find stuff that you could do because people weren't spending money because they were worried about losing their jobs. And then you couldn't just go places and get things because everything was closed. So even if I wanted to work, I wasn't allowed to work. So, so tell me, so tell me about the old truck. So, um, yeah. So I was telling you, yeah, yeah, she told me <laughs> yeah, yeah. how we just had these, um, these moments and we call them holy moments where it was just like, you know, everything's going to be okay. Um, and we just, I don't know. We had a lot of, a lot of faith and, um, we were talking in here about, we had this old 1949. Uh, yeah, it was a 49 international, which international. is basically just an old farm truck. Um, and he had gotten it. He, he and his dad had always worked on trucks growing up. And so he had gotten it to kind of work on with the kids. And we quickly realized that we have six people and this was like a tiny truck. So it, we had never, he had never really done anything with it. It's just been sitting out there. And we had talked about selling it. And um, when all of this happened, we were in here, you know, cooking dinner and the music was on and the kids were playing. And I was like, you know, it'd be, it'd be a good time to sell the truck. Like that would be just some extra, um, you know, cash flow at this point, just to, for whatever, next month's whatever. Um, and so we're kind of tossing around and we knew this guy down the street, he collects trucks or whatever. And I mean, it was maybe not even an hour later. Yeah, it was the same day. He knocks on the door, like comes into the garage and knocks on the door, which he has never been to our, our house like that before. Um, and says, hey, um, just, just, you know, ready to buy that truck. And it, I mean, he, he, the man couldn't see me, but Patrick could now looked at him. He was like, I know, I know what you're going to say. Cause I was about to preach like, <laughs> you know who that was from. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it was just, you know, this crazy... Southern Catholics are so funny because they say things like Baptist. I was about to preach. Like, yeah. <laughs> Catholics in Minnesota do not talk like that. So. <laughs> well... Well, welcome to the South. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not something I say all the time, but I was about to like, oh my gosh, you know what just happened? And he, before I could even get it out of my mouth, he was like, I, yes, like, I know, I hear you, I hear him. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. Like so, stop your so that, that was a, I mean, a godsend. I mean, what, no matter which yeah. way you look at it, that was a godsend. Yeah. Uh, and so you've, so you're at home, bored out of your mind, kind of worried about finances and uh, you've got wood sitting around your garage. Cause you know, you're just going to use it. Like I say, yeah. like, no, I could use that. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I, mean, I, I, I move those pieces of butcher block, no less than 15 times going, golly, these things are a pain. This is really just in my way. Yeah, so like that's a that's another moment, right? Right, that we didn't throw that away because I throw everything away. So the fact that I didn't toss that out, but yeah, so you might be my wife's long lost sister because yeah. she throws everything away. She, she, she doesn't let me keep anything, like, except this piece of wood. <laughs> She's um, gonna hate me for this story, but I I know that I know that feeling, Pat, because I was over in Germany for a couple of years, right? And, if you know anything about Germany, like every over there, it's like everything's like big for beer, right? And I had these really two <laughs> big, nice glass beer steins, like yeah. beer glass beer steins. I brought them home and I kept them and we met and got married. And I come home one day and I'm like, hey, uh, 
I'm gonna have a beer. Where are my beer mugs? She goes, Well, you haven't used them for a while, so I threw them away. No. I'm like, those are for those are for you <laughs> just Lawrence, I've done that. <laughs> I'm like, those were for Germany. Yeah. It was well, just you, glass, know, but, you know, it's you know, thing just random things. Well, what'd you keep it for? I don't know. I've had it for forever. So that's why I kept it. Well, we're not keeping it anymore. That's the next business I'm gonna start as an organizing business. <laughs> Because I would love to do that. You heard it here, folks. So yeah. that's right. <laughs> Lillian Sparrow Woodworking and Organizing. <laughs> so uh so you so you make this cutting board, yeah, post it on Facebook, and in your mind it's like, oh, it's pretty simple. And all of a sudden people are like, Oh, I want one. Yeah. So actually his um my boss at the clinic boss was the, the first PT one clinic. that ordered anything, and you know. Guilt by her. <laughs> she was she was doing it out of goodwill. Yeah, she she was. she she was ordering for gifts, but she was like, "This feels like the right thing to do," you know. She had to let me go. It wasn't you know anything that yeah. she wanted to do or that she had chosen, and so she was actually the first order that we officially took. Um, and then it just I don't know. It kept snowballing, and we kept looking at each other like, "What?" what's happening? Like I, we, I just, I would wake up and have like three or four messages from people. Um, and then it got to a point really not that long ago. Cause I mean, this has only been a year that we were like, maybe we should name ourselves. Um, and then, so one of the things that we did a lot while we were here was just listen to, you know, Lauren Daigle radio or, or this, you know, different Christian radios. And we, every time we'd be sort of panicking about, work we would hear these songs about the lily and the sparrow and how they didn't worry um or you know sparrows and this and that and so um, i know what you're talking about for for aren't the aren't the lily and the sparrow clothed even more beautifully than you and yet they don't yeah they don't worry. yeah and it's all over right. i mean it's in the bible and in so many places um and the you know the sparrow doesn't worry about which way the wind blows the lily doesn't worry about the next the weather season, yeah. the season, changes in the um, season so there you know there was a lot of there were and there was one particular song that we were ha i was having a uh i would say a bad day um i had a lot of bad days but um and that song came on and it, like the whole house kind of just got quiet and we just listened to the song and it, it really it like, resonated, it, it resonated hard with both of us that's you know and like we're not supposed to get along like i'm like a reformed calvinistic baptist who likes martin luther so like there should be fire <laughs> luther's great huh so don't say, great too. don't you're gonna get excommunicated if you say that too much <laughs> so, you Philip talk to a reformed Calvinistic Baptist. We have to have a conversation. That's right. That's One of right. my dearest friends is a Baptist. We love that. <laughs> most most other Baptists don't even like me. So, <laughs> and I have a very I have like I have two very good friends. One in particular that's very I'm very bonded to, who I met doing street evangelism. If you know anything about Kevin, that won't surprise you. Yeah. But um, I met. I met one of them doing street evangelism and he, he invited me on to their podcast and now I've become friends with them and it's, our conversations are actually a lot of fun. So I, I say that all tongue in cheek, of course. So yeah. Yeah, we actually, that's how we met. We met at a, at a retreat in Notre Dame. Um, and then we did retreats all through, um, high Wait, school no, and like which, which one, like the Notre Dame or the Notre Dame. I know. <laughs> no, no, we weren't that fancy. <laughs> no, we were not. I mean, are we talking us, the university or are like we that. talking the church? University. Yeah. University. University. Oh. Yeah. A retreat at the university you met at, huh? Yes, yeah. We went on uh, for a summer. Uh, there was a week in the summer that our our parishes um, sent kids up there, and I don't know. It was like a week, I think, mm -hmm. or two. I don't know if I go left home for two weeks. I'm even friends with atheists, so like no, you know, like no one knows <laughs> what to do. <laughs> um, so, your faith is actually really kind of playing a a role in how you're progressing because things just keep kind of you know some people would say coincidentally or whatever lining up for you Absolutely. to to all like this this shouldn't be happening. This is not something I would have ever done. I and, would say that that the only thing that kept me square during all of this and kept me on a level was my faith um you know we and my wife 
Um, but you know, you don't have to wait. Like there's, when you're unemployed, there's, there's no time to wake up. There's no time to get dressed. There's no time to get to doing anything. So you can get caught in this weird, lazy, awful place. And I opted not to go that route. And I would wake up and I would go sit outside. Mm-hmm. During the, the, the other great thing that happened was we live in South Louisiana. The weather down here, we don't usually get an actual spring. We'll get like two days where it's like, man, it's really nice outside. And then it's blazing hot. And then it's October. You know, like it's so we don't we don't get it we don't get an actual spring. Go from two nice days to blazing hot October. I'm telling you, like like we'll get two nice days in March, maybe a day or two in April, and then it's blazing hot the rest of the time all the way until October. We had from March through really into June very beautiful weather. So I'd go sit outside and read my little prayer book and like kind of set my day up. He and that, that was that was the only stuff. thing that was like keeping me on somewhat of a trajectory when all of this started. So, so you go out and, and we've already talked about the cutting board, but you're just like, I'm going to do something with this today. I'm tired of yeah. sitting around. I'm just going to do something. Yep. yep. Just busy work. Yeah. And yeah. when I look back, it's kind of funny because the, the tools that I had then versus the tools that I have now, I was not equipped to make the cutting board that I made. I was not, I didn't have the knowledge. I, I kind of guessed my way through it and figured it out. And we didn't have the money to buy anything. And we didn't have the money to buy anything. You know. So it wasn't like, oh, well, I, you know, I need this fancy new planer. Great. Cool story. You can't have it. You know, well, it, um, I can relate like this, this microphone here is, I'm going to ruin my sound for a second. Uh, a, a friend, well, no, he's a friend, but like one of my atheist friends from Great Britain said, I love your podcast. I want to buy you a mic. The, my, my, my beanie is, was hand knitted by a gal who listens. And she said, yep. I want to, I want to make you a beanie. Yeah. So I, I picked up some, some of my um, equipment. My dad had old worn out plane, an old worn out planer that he had gotten from the neighbor that was throwing it away. Um, he had um, an old joiner that didn't run. We got running again, and um, and it still runs. The planer is dead and gone, but, um, I mean, I put it through its paces. But even those things, like, I couldn't afford the new knives for them. So, like, everything that I would plane would come out just needing a boat ton of sanding. So there's hours of sanding that I had to do. And we had friends come over and help us sand. Yeah, I mean, you know, it it wasn't things that were insurmountable. Accountable, but looking back, it's like the, the odds were a hundred percent against my ability to start this thing, and then all of a sudden it just gained traction. Yeah, well, we had people who we knew who just came out the the literal woodwork, yeah. um, and were like, "Yes, we want one. Yes, we want one." And you know, all Pun, of a sudden, puns are not allowed. Puns. Yeah. <laughs> the composition book was just like full of all these orders, and then we got worried because. He was going to go back. We knew he was going to probably go back to work soonish. And I was like, "You, I, you're, we're taking too many orders. Like, you're not going to be able to get this done." But there was no, there was no end in sight for the clinic. You know, the clinic. Right. You know, I'm reaching out to them. They're saying, "Yeah, we still can't do anything." And you know, here we are. Like now, we're like May, still don't know. June, still don't know. And so, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I can't just sit around and and wait for this theoretical job to come around right. uh, and there was you know there's no hiring going on for sure right everybody's suffering every clinic has given their people pay cuts so going out and looking for a job was a was a useless waste of time yeah he did he did a lot of manual labor yeah for- were you were you drawing unemployment at the time funny story about that applied for unemployment and was denied and couldn't figure out why. Um, couldn't, couldn't get in touch with so anything. I called the, you know, whatever the phone number was for the unemployment line. And they said, based on your social security number, you call back on Thursday. Thursday comes, I call back. We're not taking calls today. Great. Okay. And that was 
So, so this was, you know, several weeks in a row. So, so now I'm mad, right? Like I'm, I've been an employed person for contributing to unemployment. 15 <laughs> years, contributing to the unemployment system. And here I am unemployed and can't draw unemployment. And they sent me rejection letters and I could never, never I could never get could get a human on the phone to figure out what was wrong with my application, why I was being denied, what was going on. And then when I get back into, you know, into the working world, people were telling me like I had a patient whose husband was like a nurse practitioner and he was drawing unemployment. She was like, he was making a ton off of unemployment. And I'm like, I'm not mad at her, but I'm mad at the system for sure. Did you ever find out why they were rejecting you? No, no. I mean, have you ever tried calling one of those systems? It's, Im oh, it's yeah. impossible to get through. It's like press zero for this, press zero. And they're like, call back on Thursday. Thursday comes around. Well, that we're happens, not taking calls that happens. Today. Our phones are turned off today. Yeah. Great. For weeks and weeks. So you just. So you're not like, mad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then I'm mad and wash my hands of it. And, you know, my father-in-law kept asking me, why, why, why don't you keep calling? I'm like, because I'm not like, what's the point? You know, I'm wasting my time. I'm spinning my wheels. They're denying me for some weird reason. And I, I can't sit here and waste time trying to get in touch with someone that doesn't apparently exist. It was right. for no lack of time, for sure. I mean, there was much effort put into that. So, so here you are, you're like a year into making charcuterie boards and, and cutting boards and you're making them custom made now. Yeah. Everything was custom. Yeah, everything's custom. Right. Well, but I mean, uh, like now somebody will tell you what they're looking for and you'll be like, yeah, I can do that. So are yeah. you putting, are you putting designs on things now or? Yeah. yeah so we, we're doing some laser engraving. I haven't gotten into the whole CNC world of cutting out and then adding in lays and all of that. That's a whole nother. We um, do lots of, yeah, lots of income different patterns. Level, and... but, you know, I, that's a, that's a very big expense to get. A I like how you say we're doing some laser engraving as if that's not a, like, <laughs> we're, not, we're only think, doing laser engraving. He doesn't think anything <laughs> is like good and everything he makes, I'm like, that's amazing. Like people can't do that. I grew up with a dad who was a, um, he was a Catholic school principal. Like he didn't fix things. So then I married him who fixes everything. So it, I, you know, my dad's an engineer. My grandfather on my dad's side was an engineer. My grandfather on my mom's side was a sheep. So you're kind of, so you're kind of the black sheep then. Y yeah. yeah. yeah oh, kind you're of. a jock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And then, in fact, I, I start when I started college, I started off in engineering. And then I was in the middle of failing an electrical engineering test, had no idea what the test was about. And no, it wasn't for lack of studying that I realized, like, this, this is probably not my, my bag. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm just going to say we're Speaking for the general public, if you were failing that test, we're kind of glad you're not an electrical engineer now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. Because <laughs> so, it was just like electrical engineering 101. It was like <laughs> intro to electrical engineering. I don't Spell understand engineering. why all the houses mm. keep burning down. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, so you go up now. Now you're like you're doing, you're doing laser engraving you're you're making you know you're putting designs on things I, I would imagine a lot of monogramming because people still like monogramming yeah we you know we have we're a couple south, we yeah. have a couple that um they're in their early 20s and they've bought what four or five boards yeah, because they're friends every time their married. friends get married they just send us the last name mm -hmm. and the wedding date and we pick out a board send them a picture of it they're like looks great and then we laser engrave the last name and the wedding date on it so it's you know become like their go-to wedding gift for all their friends but we've done so lots of you gotta you gotta trees. tap into the older person market and pretty soon you can start making like laser engraved headstones yeah that's right <laughs> i don't know we're in the wood business <laughs> and then you know we also um we started so in the event production company i also do some of our design work so i what i would tinker with uh, Adobe Illustrator and, you know, mess with some of our, I wasn't doing high level design stuff by any means, but I was able to take some of that skill and people would send us grandma's recipe for, you know, whatever in her written handwriting. 
and I was able to get it to where the software would recognize it and then get it onto the laser engraver. And then I was burning boards that had recipes with family members' handwritings that, you know, somebody whose dad had passed and his handwriting for, his, what was it, like a rocky road or something like that. It's, it's, so we it's decided been, we're getting all the secret family recipes. That's also, <laughs> yeah. If you want to figure out how to get the best recipes, you, you do our business. Yeah. Everybody sends us grandma's <laughs> best recipe. So how many miles a day are you having to run now? <laughs> so it's, yeah. That's right. That's right. No, none. Because now his his daily life sort of now is, um, you know, he if I go work out, he's got the kids on his own and then brings them to school and then, you know, does sort of his nine to five. And so are then, you back at the are you back at the clinic then? Yeah. So fortunately, I guess I could say fortunately, the clinic let someone go. And so there was an opening for a position. Ouch. So it was a fortunate and unfortunate kind of thing. Yeah. But I was in the right place at the right time yeah. and was able to take the position in the clinic. Um, and then in October, um, we was the beginning of us being able to put on running events here in the South. And it wasn't for ease by any means. Uh, one of my business partners um, was told no many times by city officials and he just kept fighting and kept fighting and if it wasn't for him we probably still wouldn't be putting on events yet yeah. but because of his, his you know his stubbornness it can be a problem sometimes his but his stubborn his yeah. perseverance in this case got us the permissions to put on races and it was not easy and they were not what they look like usually usually we put on these big post-race parties and obviously none of that is happening yet but we're putting on races again. That's what's that's what's important. So starting in October, we started putting on events again, and uh, in a you know strange. Like some of those still got canceled. Like some in January got you know it was like yeah we had a, we had, an, we had an event that got canceled. It was in partnership with a local hospital, and they didn't want their name on an event that was going to be live and in person. It's yet. just been a roller. It's been a roller coaster. And, you, you kind of have to understand, you have to agree with them, you, but you don't agree with them. You know, you think like, we got to get back to business, but they're also in the business of healthcare. So they, they had to stand for what the current mood is, unfortunately. So we, we were kind of put by the wayside when it came to that. Um, but the rest of our events, we've been able to manage and have gotten really great reviews for our ability to put on events because runners are like, we don't care. We'll travel wherever. Just We would just want to run. Like We just want to be able to do what we were used to doing, what we want to do. We feel safe doing it. So just give us the chance. Give us the opportunity to do if it again. If there was ever a sporting event made for people who were trying to avoid other people, Right. right. And this comes from a runner. I ran in high school and yeah. Yeah. in college. I ran 10Ks and 5Ks. And, and it's kind of crazy. Some of the stuff like that, like uh, baseball around here never got canceled. You'd go out to the baseball fields, not collegiate, but, you know, the other le the little kid leagues and there'd just be, you know, people sitting next to each other, which whatever is fine. But like, uh, just let us put on a, a race. Um so yeah, he does that, and then he'll come home, and so we're, he'll, he's playing with the kids, and at about 7.30 when they go to bed, he goes out to the wood shop, and I go to bed, and then um, I can always see what time he comes in, because he sets the alarm, he comes in about 11.30 or 12, and then that's... So I'm that's, cutting into wood shop time. Oh, no. <clears throat> I'm giving him the night off. Yeah, she's like... Oh, well, <laughs> like I said, brain's behind the business. So, <laughs> um, so, so let... I, I want to shift gears a little bit. So um, things are apparently looking up. The, the the events are picking up again, obviously. Kevin, you're keeping Kevin in, in business. Yeah. On top of flipping houses. So <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you owe me for this. I'm just going to keep promoting you until you get right. that business right. name. Um, so it'd be a lot easier to promote him if you had a business name. It, right. Besides the timing business, if like, if like, so Kevin, you've heard this now, you're getting it from three people. Name your house right. flipping business. We were, I was very nervous about naming us because then it would be real, but it's real, right? Yeah. Yeah. Makes so, it official. so you've got Lillian Sparrow, you've got the, the, the school job, you've got your, 
event business, you've got your, your job, all of this stuff is rolling along, but have you guys been personally impacted uh, apart from the, the financial strain? And I'm, I'm just going to be frank with you. My position is, is that the COOF did not cause all the financial strain, I, government over reaction to things in my, by my perspective. And there again, not everybody's going to agree with that, but government overreaction tends tends to ruin a lot of things and put people in a lot of tough positions. But on a personal, di- from a personal dynamic, health-wise, have you guys been personally impacted by by the, the, the current pandemic or know people or lost anybody because of this? So we, so we, were, we were fortunate to not have anyone in our immediate uh, circle, I'll say, yeah, uh, friends. that was lost due to the virus, but um, we knew it was lot. crazy. It was crazy how many um, people that we knew, you know, there were people that we were acquainted with in the past. That it was a lot of dads, it was a, a lot, lot of dads. dads, and we were we were um, pretty cautious, especially in the beginning, about sort of being yeah, quarantined. Some, some of our friends kind of gave us junk about it. Like we we were trying to be the we were trying to be the good citizens at first, um, and we're still you know, no, well, we're still trying to be good citizens. But but my dad, we were, we were trying to, we were trying we're to trying follow, to... like we were trying to do our part to help save this thing off. Because we kept thinking if we just did it for two weeks, yeah, you know? it was like it was like yeah, so a couple weeks, like that's fine, yeah, uh, like, we'll just hang out at the house for a couple weeks. But then, of then course, you know, happens. everything snowballs. We're months later. We're you know, unemployed, not able to draw unemployment. And, you know, we're, you know, we're trying not to be down on this whole thing, but at the same time, all the, all the talking heads are talking and, and nothing is changing and nothing is improving. And, but the question was, did we lose anybody? And the answer is no, no. we did not personally lose anybody. We, I knew a few friends who, had it, um, and then we knew a lot of people who, like, man, it just seemed one after the other um, lost their dads. Um, so we didn't, like he said, they were acquaintances, you know, that we had gone to school with and things like that. Yeah. But we were, we were pretty, um, you know, and we live in a small town, and if you run, you know, three or four miles in our town, you've made the whole you've made track, and you've street. also passed uh, six or seven members of my family. Um, and a lot of which are older. So we did try to, you know, keep them safe, but now they've all been vaccinated. And, um, so we feel pretty good. I did go to the grocery store without a mask the other day. Oh, you, I know. Are you trying to get arrested? So I, know. <laughs> I mean, half uh, the employees weren't wearing masks. <laughs> I, it's, uh, <laughs> I ran my, my wife and my, son and my my daughter she, she left her baby home with her husband she's i'm going to town <laughs> and we they after about four stops my wife's like i'm not wearing this stupid thing anymore yeah yeah it's it, i will tell you the kids have my oldest has been fine at school my son doesn't love it and we we're very fortunate that our school did i mean they did everything so we opened on day one i mean when we were supposed to open in august we opened and we have not been out of school since. So our kids have not um, missed a beat in terms of school. Of course, it's looked differently. Um, I'm actually going to miss the picnic lunches because we don't eat in the cafeteria, but I'm sort of, I'm sort of going to not be super glad about going back to that. And I, you know, I went to a Catholic high school. She went to a Catholic high school. They taught us compliance, right? Like they, you know, you have to have your hair cut a certain way. You have to wear your clothes a certain way. You can only wear certain shoes fine, whatever. And then that's what I'll wear. If that's what keeps me in school, then that's what I'm wearing. Well, so, there's some lessons to that. And, the, and the, there, there's certainly some very important things that you draw from that. My, my dad worked at Exxon for 35 years. And when they told them that they could no longer have full beards because the respirators didn't fit appropriately, he shaved his beard as opposed to losing his job. So like, you know, there's some compliance is, is to a degree a good thing, but we're getting to the waning part now and it's it's I'm well we sort of we're sort of in the uh you know now that I don't know how it is where you are but in Louisiana everybody who 
once a vaccine is able to get one, um, 16 and or 18 and whatever this CDC is. So 16. now we feel like now that everybody's being allowed, like, why are we, you know, why the people are we who've gotten, who've wanted the vaccine have chosen to get it. So and the people who like, don't, if you don't want it, don't get which it. Is fine. That's like, fine. That's, that's your choice. I have no problem with that. Um, but we sort of feel but like now, now it's like, all right, so you've had the chance. Up. So let's, let's get this thing back going. Let's turn the businesses back on because we've all had the chance to choose. And so now that we've all made our choices, business needs to go on. Yeah. And that's, I'm glad to hear you guys say that because I think that one of the, one of the problems that we have is uh, anybody who like raises any questions is automatically seen as being some sort of radical, like, Oh, you're a conspiracy. You're we're conspiracy. super not radical. <laughs> so, we're super not radical. We're so yeah, not I mean, radical. We're sort of just middle of the road and like, you know, we're, we're sort of inundated with our life and four kids. And so you know, if you ask us the latest, um, we try and we try and side on the side of it. logic, and whichever wherever that falls, that's where we're going to be. Um, logic and reason okay. is a is is where we stand. And no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, you can't be devout in your faith and like. I know it's crazy. Huh? My, I have two friends that are very firm atheists. I. Jo jokingly refer to them as devout atheists and then <laughs> <laughs> I like that. They and and they just you cannot be pirate. You you know I'm talking about you right now. So um it, the I the irony is 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 that's exactly the kind of the language that I use is that logic and reasoning have to win out. And yes. so I I you know I point at things like you know, like the teachers unions, no offense Lauren. The I'm, I'm sure you teacher. probably don't have one in your situation, but I mean, look at the teacher unions right now. Like, we're going to follow the science. And then when the CDC says, oh, well, we can go back to having three feet of distancing between students and school, they're like, we don't trust the science. Right, right. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so I think that that's actually, I'm very encouraged to hear you say logic and reasoning because at some point you have to step back. And I think this applies to everything that we've, we've talked about in, in the conversation is that at some point you have to step back and say, okay, enough's enough. I'm taking responsibility for me. You take responsibility for you. I'm, I'm going to do what I need to do to survive within, I mean, within reason. I'm like, I'm not going to go right. like, shoot and eat my neighbor or anything like right, that. Right, right. That, okay, maybe in 20 or 30 years, if this hasn't gone away, I might shoot and eat my neighbor. <laughs> oh my gosh, don't say that. <laughs> That's I feel like we're finally question. seeing the light. That's, totally. That was for, for anybody who's spying on me. That was a joke. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess that I would, I would say this, like, as you go forward, like, you have this thing going on here. Like, this could be a thing. Lauren's like, well, we don't know if we're ready to, so don't do too much. We don't want, so we're it's not. It's really funny because that is exactly what, we just did our first um, market um, last month. Um, and it was sort of like, we went, I think we had like, 30 something, you know, items to sell. And I was like, okay, if we could just sell five, I'll be super glad if we sell five. Well, we ended up like at the end being, I was like, oh my God, we're going to sell out. Like, we had like five left. Um, and so then I was sort of looking, I was like, okay, well maybe it can be a, maybe it can be a real thing. Um, but it's hard because you don't want to give up, you know, the, um, the for sure, the for sure salaries but you know and take the leap of faith but you can't really take the leap of faith um if you if you don't take it but also you know then it comes in like you need other people to keep up with the orders but you don't want to spend the money on other people so yeah we're sort of in that weird like still figuring it out area i mean we have a we have an email address and that felt like something <laughs> so so i page. i'm i'm like we're going to make you famous I don't think anybody's really interested in us, but he makes really cool boards. <laughs> to all 455 of my subscribers, 10 of which actually watch my videos. So That's right. Hey, that's and one of them is Kevin, so he already knows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. knows where to find me. <laughs> uh, no, and it was funny because I was talking to Kevin about you guys, and he's like, 
And I think he thought he was like giving me this uh, idea. And I'm like, hey, hey, man. He's like, well, hey, you could do something like this. And I'm like, because I asked him about any business owners that he knew who were, you know, entrepreneurial. And he's, oh, you got to talk to Pat, you know, and, and, and check out. And so I messaged um, right away. And it was, it was, it was funny because he thought I was looking for potential ways to keep myself in income. And I'm looking for people to promote not. And, and as I told Lauren, I'm like, I'm not looking for, you know, I'm not looking for anybody to, you know, sponsor me. I'm not looking for, you know, Patreons and somebody to yeah. do $20 a month or anything like that. I just want to promote people who are out there fighting to keep their, their livelihoods. And when Lauren told me the story, I was like, no, I'm going to promote you. And she's like, Hey, we're not, we can't, we're not ready to hire people. And I'm like, oh. all yeah, 10 and all tens and tens of my viewers are going to now share. So. You never know. You just never know. It's been a, it's been a wild ride, but it's been a lot of fun, you know, and she, she doesn't have that, that side of the entrepreneur that's, that's ready to jump and, you know, jump in the water and see how deep it is eventually, yeah. you know, I essentially kind of it's, 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 she'd it's rather wait for the water to recede to see how big the hole is. And, and I'm, you know, I'm on the, oh, let's jump and let's just see where it goes. Let's, let's see where, let's see where the river takes us. So I just throw in the life preserver and We're sort of like a good team. So, <laughs> so we level, we, we certainly level each other out in that regard. You know, it, it, it's not ready to be full send by any means. Um, we're not that good at it yet. Um, and you know, the event business has come back, um, which has been fantastic. And I'm actually at the end of the month going to no longer be in the BT clinic. I will only be doing the event production and the woodworking as my sole career as of right now, which yeah, is we've sort of crazy. been able to take a sigh of relief here lately yeah. in the last, you know, Months. But we're also we're also fortunate that we started a business that wasn't regulated in the sense that like you don't have to come to my house and wear a mask and there's only four of you that are allowed to come in my shop and you don't come to my shop I, you you message me and I make what you want and yeah, we send it to you. We've so, been delivering. My mom and dad will take boards and deliver them around town to people. So the COVID restrictions don't really oh, mar the coof the coof the coof coof. Are you trying to? Oh my gosh! Now we're gonna. We it. Now we're done. We're gonna no, really run off the window. It's gonna get flayed. You like dump button me or something like that. Don't you have one of those? You gotta put like a. You can't even be thing. friends now. You just ruined the whole. This is so yeah. good until you did that. The cool. <laughs> I'm your girl. <laughs> yeah, she's she's been right so good. Be in like, um, no, I. Like now, I want a port. <laughs> <laughs> and do that we can take you. care of you. Yeah. Oh, I, send you one to send one of your ten followers. That's right. What is your four hundred and fifty-five <laughs> subscribers by the time? <laughs> you said ten, not me. Ten watch. You do. You have to. Oh, ten watch. Ten watch. Oh, okay. Ten watchers. And See how little I know about. I don't even have. I don't even. I'm know almost I'm halfway to being monetized, and all that means is that they'll just find a way to demonetize me. That's right. <laughs> Because I love you, YouTube. Um, <laughs> I went to an event and spoke yesterday, and by the, the, from the time I arrived at the event to the time I got up to speak, I was at 455 and had dropped two subscribers in like an hour and a half. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm like, I'm talking about it on stage, and somebody's like, subscribed while I was speaking. So I'm like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> so, so, I, don't like, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. It's not even yeah. interested in you anymore. Uh, we're done. Yeah. So... I am going to be adding you guys to my website. You're going to be the first ad. I'm going to have you others. I'm going to be adding. Thank you. We, we really website. appreciate you doing this. Um, I mean, small business is sort of like now has this little special place in our heart. Um, right. Not that it didn't before, but now you just really know what goes in to. Um, you we know, have a deeper it, appreciation for yeah, it. Yeah. Sure. And, you know, you see all this sort of cliche things like when you when you buy small business you're paying for you know my child's dance class or whatever and that's sort of how we feel like if this can pay for tuition and does nothing else like that's a that's a win in our book um hey we, you're talking to a baptist we're not allowed to dance 
Yeah. I'm well, totally kidding. My daughter <laughs> did dance for 15 years. So, <laughs> um, so rhythmic gymnastics. Though. Yeah. Actually, none of our children actually take dance. But. <laughs> Seen how they dress. <laughs> um, no, it's a. Uh, it, it's actually it's an honor to talk to people like you and you know I was, I was telling I was telling my wife tonight I was like with everything that I've got going on personally I was like I need to go talk to somebody who's got a positive story because up here in the people state of Mark's Minnesota I've been, a, <laughs> Minis, Minnesota, I've been saying Mark's Minnesota for the last year and everybody's like what do you mean by that and I'm like well it's pretty easy <laughs> it's, Mark, Carl, right? <laughs> it's, it's literal so yeah. Yeah. um it, it's you know there's you we we're lo we're losing everything like you can't say certain things up here you can't you can't challenge a you can't challenge the governor's executive orders you like people will come down on you there are people losing their jobs left and right up here for mm -hmm. like i have a i have a friend who just went to washington dc went to didn't go didn't take part in the insurrection and lost his job Another friend who, who went to Washington, D.C., didn't take part in the insurrection and was out on administrative leave from their job that they've had for almost 30 years until last week for just being in Washington, D.C. Yeah. So, so it's, it's – and there, there again, there are people who have done things they shouldn't have done in Washington, D.C., right. who are rightly suffering the consequences. Right. But, like, I'm like, I just need to talk to somebody – who has a positive story and you guys were just like the godsend. So I get it. Oh, thank you. So when I talked to you the other day, Lauren, I'm like, I, I've got to get them on because I've interviewed so many people from Minnesota who are on the verge of losing everything. I had a, I interviewed a gal who bought two years ago, she bought a, an event center and from the people she was working from, she, she got investors. She bought it from the people who are ready to get out and the last time I talked to her, she's, they were going to, they were kicking her out because she hasn't been able to pay her rent because she hasn't been able to have any events. Yeah. And like, there, yeah. like it's a, that's it's losing a, everything. And I'm like, I can't, if I keep hearing any more of this stuff, like it's, if, if it gets any darker, right. There's yeah, no, there's you, do. No you have to find a little bit of light and, and it's not an easy, it's not an easy place to be. Um, and there's no, and I don't think there's a right way to handle it other than just like keep, keep plugging, fighting. Um, you know, and, and there's, it's sad. It and really it, you is. know, it's it's a lot like what you know what I was saying earlier about my business partner. Keep taking those no's and just ignoring them, and keep pushing and keep trying. And, right. You know, we're you know we're a small piece, but our our ability to put on events opened up doors for a lot of other events in the area to be able to do so. Right. And while part of that is frustrating because we did all this legwork to, to get our events back online, part of it's also kind of, it's kind of cool in that, you know, our work was the, was the, the beginning the of the, of the domino effect that allowed people to, well, you said yes to them. Yeah. We said yes to them. So I guess we have to say yes to you. Yes, you do. You, you need to, you know, like it, if you follow all of, you know, and all we have to do is check the boxes. Fine. You want me to check a bunch of boxes? I'll check a bunch of boxes and I'll do what I need to do, but let me do my job. Let me do what I'm, what I'm here to do and, and let my company continue to be viable. And that's, you know, we, we've, we've tried to stay as positive as we can. And have we had negative moments for sure? Yeah. Well, there was a lot with, every time a race got canceled and there was a lot of that, but it, it feels like here, I know it doesn't sound like it is, you know, Minnesota necessarily here. It feels like, you know, the, the belt buckles kind of loosening a little bit. Um, I think people are getting tired. People are yeah tired of being told no, tired of being told they can't go to work, tired of being told they can't right. do events. You know, it, it's 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 worn it's it's worn itself thin and then they hear the numbers in the hospital and it's like there's 11 people in the hospital and it's like well then i think we should probably get back to business now yeah. well and it, again everybody that wants the vaccine can have the vaccine if you don't want the vaccine you don't have to have the vaccine so 
let's let's open things back up and just see how it goes. Lauren, you were going to say something. Well, I was going to say like even you were talking about my dad earlier, who is you know um, high. I don't know. He's you know he's got a lot of conditions that would make him very susceptible. He's like everybody needs to go back to business. If I want to go somewhere, I'll wear a mask like that. I'll do that. He's like, but everybody else you know, needs to have that same option. Um, and, you know, for him, I think he, we, we were encouraged to hear like, okay, there, you know, definitely people who, you know, do have some high risk factors that also think, you know, it's time, like we need to, we need to get back in the swing and, you know, you've got, not, our kids haven't, uh, you know, they haven't done a sport or um, anything this whole year. Um, so, you know, they're ready to be, they're ready to just be kids and go play. Well, you think about it, your, your youngest has, has been living in a time where by and large, everybody she's interact, she, right? Yeah. The, everybody she's interacting with in public right now, she's never seen their faces. Right. No, she knows, she knew the word mask a long time ago and she'll take it and she'll put it on. Um, that just breaks just my, so breaks my heart. Yeah. Right, right. right. It's, gonna be, it's strange. It's, it's very strange. It's weird. And, and she'll be two next month. And, you know, they say like two and older are supposed to wear a mask. And I think like, who made that rule? Do they know two-year-olds? Like, there's no way she'd keep a mask on her face. Um, not that but I would attempt that. You, it, you guys are amazing. And, and I mean, I don't say that lightly. Like, you guys are just oh, amazing. Yeah. You're upbeat and like your, your go-get-it attitude. And it's encouraging. And and, you know, I'm fortunate to be in a group of people up here who are kind of the same way in our own way here in, in the people's people's state of Marxist Soto, we're doing our best to, to push back and saying enough is enough. And it's costing some of us, but your story is just phenomenal because you know, I told the story of a, a gal who started a, a wedding photography company and she's like, well, I don't think I fit your, your, your mold of people who are suffering. And I'm like, no, it's you do because you're fighting. And, you know, whether you guys recognize it or not, you're fighting because yeah. it, you're doing what you can do for your, you know, for your family. And it's, it's helping others. You know, you kept your event staff paid as best as you could. Yep. It, that's, that's just, that's an amazing statement. And you kept going, you, you know, even in the face of a bureaucratic nightmare where, like you, for some reason, you don't qualify, but a nurse practitioner does. But, you know, and it's, it's an encouraging thing to hear that you went out over some scrap wood and have now launched another business that's d doing so well that, like, you're able to do that and your event stuff and, and come home from a, a, that full-time, you know, job. Yeah. Or now you're, you're, doing your own thing and that's what that's what we all need to be working towards and so i'm really grateful that you guys took the time to sit down and and i mean it we're gonna i don't know you know it's there you you might get some traction you you might not but i am happy to you know very happy that you guys were willing to sit down and tell your story and you know i'm not well, gonna feel too it was, it was it was good for you to do this and we appreciate it and Really, well, if you want to do like, I don't know, do you do that? Like a giveaway? Can you do a giveaway or something like that? I, like yeah, I, like send them a board to give away. I, I, yeah. I don't know if I want to give it away. <laughs> okay, well, you can keep you it. Can it. A, oh, look, and the winner is <laughs> me. Me. I get some sort of weird <laughs> ethics complaint or something. I don't know. But, <laughs> do you see one of the board that they made for him? No, it's, uh, <laughs> Um, no, seriously, so I'm not gonna, I'd love to do that. Yeah, I'm. I, uh, my wife's like, I'm not putting anything with your logo on our dining room table. <laughs> <laughs> Liz has our logo on it. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. So yours should be fine. I mean, you can get your logo put on it actually, but. I don't have a, this is like, I don't have a logo. I don't, I don't even know how to use Adobe, whatever. <laughs> we can help you with that. <laughs> um, but. I, I'm looking forward to putting you guys on the website and putting this out on the YouTube channel. And, and you know, thank you for doing that. Seriously, thank you. And like, it's that, and because 
and Lauren, I, you and I talked about this. Small business is the backbone of this country. Everybody looks at places like Walmart and Amazon and all these other companies and are like, oh man, if it wasn't for them, no. Like what they don't under, what people do not understand is that it's, it's folks like you doing what you're doing that actually keep people going because not everybody can work for those companies. Right. And, you know, and, and quite frankly, when you look at the way small business operates, small business takes care of their employees far better, far, far better. And granted, you don't have employees outside of the event business, but you it's know, crazy because, you know, you, you look at the, the abilities of some of those companies, some of those larger companies and what me and my bar- business partners would give to be able to have that leverage to be able to take care of our employees even better, not to take care of ourselves. Like, yeah. You know, granted, we would be living a cleaner life in that sense, but to be able to take better care of our employees would be just, a, you know, like we're, we're always looking for that way. To, to figure out how to, we're all the people that are employed by us are our friends. And we, and I, I'm, I'm like next weekend, we have an event on Saturday and we're having a crawfish boil after the event. And all of the people who work for us are coming over. And so it's, they're like a family and, and you don't get that in some of those bigger situations. And just to be able to spread that, that love and joy with those people that, work hard with you and are passionate about your business with you. It's, it's, it's something that you just can't get anywhere else. And for, and for all of my viewers who are either um, not in the South or um, are up North or are overseas, crawfish is what we refer to as crawdad. And what they are, they're a very small freshwater lobster. Um, Yes. So (laughs) People it's are going, it's a crawfish. We, Why are you broiling it? We it's broil a, a bug and then we rip it in half it's and then we bug, eat it. It's not a bug, it's a crustacean. It's a bug. <laughs> <laughs> Don't challenge the teacher, bro. That's yeah, right. That's right. I teach, I teach the, the, the animal classification. <laughs> it's not a bug. No, it's, no, it's been a lot of fun having you guys. And um, if there's anything we can do, like if you guys decide like, hey, we want to go bigger, you know, we want to do this maybe, you know, more. <laughs> more. <laughs> Relax, it's okay. You know, pretty soon you're going to have to build a shop. And Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to have to end this now. <laughs> <laughs> In honor about that, we need a big, bigger shop. I have had yeah. the opportunity to, to look at two people are far more fun to look at than me. And so as, as we're done here, check out their... Uh, the, their Facebook page for the business, Lillian Sparrow. And there will be a link in the description. Uh, there will be a link going up on the website. And this is a, like, seriously, support them. Like, everybody knows somebody who's getting married. Everybody knows somebody who's having an anniversary. And if you don't, you need to expand your horizons. <laughs> but it, if maybe if you got a grandchild being born, you could, you know, you could find out what the name, not that anybody tells anybody these things. Anymore. We've actually done some little circles for the pictures for grandkids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, see, there we go. So see? look these guys up and uh, let's overwhelm them with business so that Pat can get his shop and Lauren can and stop stressing. So she just has to bite the bullet and <laughs> be done with it. And, and this is a perfect example of, I, I end every, almost every one of my, uh, episodes with the the statement six semper tyrannis that's always to tyrants this is literally what it looks like in the united states pat and lauren are literally saying that's always to tyrants every single time they make a board and they send it out every single time they do something custom for somebody they're saying that's always to tyrants like you don't get to control us you don't get to tell us that we can't live and how to live because they're doing it for themselves and they don't need the the overarching umbrella of the state to make it happen so until next time thus always the tyrants six emperor tyrannus <laughs>